Welcome to the new Drivers of Vulnerability Monitor from the Hague Centre for Strategic Studies. This monitor combines over 50 Drivers of Vulnerability to Interstate Conflict, drawing together data from over two decades for around 200 countries. Given the recent turbulence in the Middle East and North Africa, the challenges of predicting and preventing civil conflict are fresh in our minds. Interstate conflict comes in many different forms, from revolutions and wide-scale societal conflict to full-blown civil wars and genocide. The causes of these different incarnations are complex rather than simple. The monitor is therefore set up to allow us to explore the vulnerability of states from a multitude of angles. This is important, as vulnerability is experienced differently by different countries, and the appearance of certain drivers that might make a country vulnerable do not always lead to an outbreak of instability. Indeed, drivers of vulnerability can be economic, social, political or geographic, and are likely to be a mixture of all or some of these depending on the individual country. The monitor uses an interactive map platform called StatPlanet, which can also be run on your tablet or smartphone. At the top of your screen, you can see six main groups of indicators that were identified in the academic conflict literature to be key drivers of vulnerability to interstate conflict, from security to general risk and predictive models. By clicking on one of the groups, you can find a list of all the variables that fall into that category. To show you how the monitor works, let's take a couple of drivers and run you through how to work with the data shown in the map. For example, when you click on Demographic and then on Youth World, our map updates instantly. For this indicator, countries in dark yellow have a higher share of young people as a percentage of the adult population. A large youth population, in combination with a sluggish economy or weak job prospects, have been linked to the outbreak of violence during the Arab Spring. In the left-hand corner of your screen, there is a literature review, covering the link between each particular variable and the onset of interstate conflict. This includes a reading list for those who want to explore the link in more depth. Another feature of our monitor is the RSS feed. If you click on any country in the map, a window will pop up displaying news about that particular country, supplied by agencies such as the International Crisis Group or the Europe Media Monitor. The results vary consider considerably, and it is possible to find information in English, French, Mandarin and several other languages. Depending on your navigator, it may be necessary to hold the Shift button when clicking. Now that we've shown you how to use the map functions yourselves, let us take you through some of the different analytical tools available and explore some of the drivers of vulnerability that can already be drawn from the monitor. Instead of focusing on one specific country or region, for this analysis we've set the monitor to compare data across all countries in all years. This will help us to identify potential pathways to interstate conflict before unpicking them for a smaller subset of different countries. One way of examining relationships is to look at correlations between factors. So, for example, identifying those countries with high youth cohorts and low GDP growth, and seeing whether the combination of these factors corresponds to outbreaks of violence. Let's take a couple of indicators from across our different categories, starting with the relationship between political and economic factors. If we select, for example, control of corruption as our y-axis variable, and food dependency as our x-axis variable, we get a strong negative correlation. While not controlling for other factors, it indicates that the better a country controls corruption, the lower proportion of household budget that is spent on food is likely to be. We can now add a third dimension to our chart by setting the bubble size to represent another value. At the moment, they're all of uniform size, but if we select, for example, intrastate magnitude of armed conflict for our bubble size, then we effectively get to explore two correlations on one chart. We can instantly see that countries experiencing high levels of intrastate conflict, again, not controlling for other variables, also tend to score poorly on both control of corruption and food dependency. Notable outliers are also easily identified. In this case, Israel scores particularly well on both control of corruption and food dependency for a country experiencing conflict. Similarly, there are countries that score low on control of corruption and high on food dependency, but that are not yet suffering from internal conflict. These might be interesting cases to explore further, as you could conclude that these countries might be more vulnerable to instability than their high-performing counterparts. However, we must be wary of drawing conclusions from the static view of the latest available data. It is possible that poor scores on control of corruption and food dependency drive conflict, and that conflict itself weakens control of corruption and drives high food dependency. This is where the ability to automatically play the analysis over time really stands out as a useful tool. By tracking the development of these high conflict countries from the beginning of the dataset to the end, it becomes possible to, if only preliminarily, assess different historical paths of countries' vulnerability to interstate conflict. You can also create your own combinations of drivers by clicking on the Create Composite button at the top right-hand corner of the screen. This will bring up a selection pane with a list of all of our variables on it. Let's select Government Effectiveness as a proxy for Strength of Regime and Rule of Law as a proxy for Regime Legitimacy. 
Once you have named your composite, the map will display the combined scores for each country. It is also possible to set your own colour scheme for the map and to change the ranges of the map legend. This allows you to customise the data display to suit your research needs. Just click on one of the colours in the map legend and select your preferred colour scheme. This map can then be downloaded by clicking on the arrow button at the bottom of your screen. As you can see from our map, North America, Europe and Australasia score particularly well on both indicators. Latin America and Africa show a mixed picture, with high scorers such as Chile, Uruguay and Botswana counterbalanced by low scorers like Venezuela, French Guiana and many Central African states. Asia presents a largely negative picture, although states like Japan, South Korea and Malaysia stand out as particularly high scorers in the region. When played over time, it is clear that there is significant variation in the performance of countries in Latin America, Africa and Asia in terms of government effectiveness and rule of law, while continents with a high proportion of high scoring countries show notably less variation. This fluctuating picture is evidence of the complexity of civil conflict and a reminder about the perils of applying general causes to all conflict. However, the outlook is far from pessimistic. Instead, it encourages us to explore different avenues to conflict as experienced by different countries and to use background data to compare conditions across time and regions. With this data, we can go beyond general propositions that low government effectiveness leaves some states vulnerable to conflict some of the time, to identify specific states or regions where this does seem to be the case. By uniting and testing propositions from a wide range of backgrounds, the richer our understanding of state vulnerability is likely to become. While individual outbreaks of civil war or political unrest remain difficult to predict, by monitoring the situation more closely in countries where there is a high vulnerability to violence, subtle changes in environment that might catalyse the outbreak of instability are less likely to go unnoticed, and growing pressure in a state or region could be mitigated before violence erupts. This approach offers a bridge between the often separate domains of academic research and policy making, integrating academic research on drivers of vulnerability and decades of data on these drivers into one interface which encourages exploration, informing a comprehensive approach to vulnerability mitigation. We hope you find the drivers of vulnerability monitor useful, and we will be updating the data as often as we can to keep it a relevant tool for examining our security environment as it unfolds.